And now, Dr. Krieger's lecture program starts right now. All right, I guess we're uh, ready to get started. Thanks for uh, sacrificing one of the few days we have in Michigan of being a nice day as far as uh, with the weather back and forth. So I appreciate you guys coming out and, uh, you know, taking an interest in your own health. Um, because uh, we see it's, uh, it's, it's very important, as you'll see, uh, through most of the research that I put up here and, and the science, um, that, you know, your health is dependent on what you do, not what you read or what I put up here, but what you take from it and what you do with it. So uh, there's a quote that I found. Um, it came out of uh, Life Extension magazine, and it was... Um, quoted by Jir Goyan, he's a medical doctor and he used to be the commissioner of the FDA in 1979 to 1981. And he made a statement in the, the uh, uh, Detroit Free Press on November 5th, 2000 as stating, we as patients have, to, have got to raise the questions ourselves and take care of our own selves. Now he was the head of the FDA. So, to think that the FDA is, uh, you know, there's some good things about it and there's also some bad. I think there's more bad than good about certain uh, policies that have to do with the, f uh, the Food and Drug Administration. But somebody coming out and saying that is saying, listen, uh, you know, the buyer beware. It's that simple. There's so many uh, different things out there. There's so much misinformation um, that um, what you do uh, your, yourself and um, it, it's very important in your future and your family. Um, so um, I, uh, I want to pass around this bag. This was, kind of a, this was kind of a funny story. And I was walking uh, from room seven, and I was walking, for people that have been into the office, I was walking from room seven. I was walking all the way down. I was going back to our office. I made a left past the bathroom, and I'm like, it smells like mold. I'm like, something smells like mold. I don't know what it is, because I got a good sniffer. I got a real good sniffer. I can pick up who smokes. Nobody feel guilty that they smoke. <laughs> but, you know, I could pick up smoking, I pick up drinking. I just, very sensitive in the old factory nerve for my sense of smell. It's that simple. Um, but I walk by, and I'm like, man, that stinks. Well, we, you know, we had a, a, a water leak. Um, in the office from uh, something that happened, but you know, it was taken care of. I was wondering, man, was that the water leak? And I walked by and I, I swear it was from right there. But just as I walked around the corner where they put a lot of stuff for all the supplements and stuff, there was this bag sitting there with tortilla chips, cheese and salsa, okay? I'm like, what is this? And I'm walking around, and I smelled this thing and I didn't know where it was coming from. I said, that's coming from that bag. And I, and I, and I, I said, Cheryl, I said, can I, can I have this bag? Because this smells just like mold, just like fungus, just like to toxins, just like plastics. Okay? And this bag was so bad, this is coming out of a restaurant with your food. Okay? So when we're talking about detoxification, how your body handles chemicals, um, especially in an environment today, uh, the smell of this bag, if you can't smell this bag, if you can't smell this bag, you got sinus problems or something like that, I mean, you might have to do something with your sinuses because this is a very strong odor, okay? Because this is just, this is extreme. So I'm going to pass around this bag and just get a whiff of this and smell this. These are mostly the smells of our plastics. Can you smell that? Oh. <laughs> So I'm going to pass that around, get a smell of that, but I can't believe food is sitting in there. This is my next lecture. Um, it's on sound health. Uh, there's some interesting things. Um, on, you know, I'm not going to talk about it too much. I don't want to give too much away, but, um, you know, <clears throat> how, we, how we word things and how we say things and what things we think about and what things we accept is very important in our health. Okay, um, most people don't know that the most powerful things in the world is communication. Those communication come from words. So I'm going to talk about how saying a, sp uh, a specific word, like um, walking up to somebody and saying, you know what, I love you. 
you know, everybody can feel, wow, that's neat, you know. If somebody walks up to you and says that, or somebody walks up and says, you know what, I hate you, automatically you understand that, and there's a bunch of different chemical processes that go through your body. So by what you speak and what you're listening to and what you accept can affect your health. Okay, so I'm going to talk about sound health. I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, and that's going to be, I'm not sure on this date here, it might be July 7th. I'm thinking there might be a lot of people for 4th of July after that, and I might not be able to get a, a, a good turnaround, so I thought it would be a little bit appropriate to make it July 14th. But for right now, I think it's July 7th that that lecture is going to be on. All right, this is a cover story that out of the De uh, Detroit Free Press. And you got to really watch what you read these days out of the newspaper. This came down, this came out of the Detroit Free Press March 30th, 2004. Um, and when I took current events in seventh grade, they always told you the first paragraph pretty much tells you everything about what the rest of the story is going to be, right? Well, that's what I did with this, and I started reading over it because it had to do with health. And I said, and my mind skipped over. I said, well, wait a second. This doesn't make any sense when I got to the end. Okay? So I'm going to read it to you. It says, high intake of folic acid, B6, B12 vitamins, does not prevent stroke recurrence. A study published in February in the Journal of the Medical um, Association found. Okay? That right there tells you what? Vitamins and a stroke have no relationship. Okay? That's the first thing they put out there. Then... If you come down here, the vitamins had one beneficial effect. Okay? Then it says they lowered levels of homocysteine, an amino acid that is becoming an important measure of heart disease, not stroke, but heart disease. The study found that people with high homocysteine levels at the start of the study were the most likely to have a reoccurring stroke. So they flubbed the words. Not all, homos, not all stroke patients have homocysteine. There's different causes of stroke. That's what they tricked you on. So they said, well, if you're homocysteine, it's not going to make a difference. But if your homocysteine is high and you do those three vitamins, your reoccurrence for stroke is, is, is less. It's not gonna, it, it, you're going you're gonna to metabolize that homocysteine out of your arteries. Okay? So you've got to really watch what you read these days. Uh, does everybody understand that? So that's very important. Now, <clears throat> this, is, this, uh, this was a study done in, um, in October. It was, a, it was a European study, and they tested manual therapy, chiropractic therapy. They tested physiotherapy, which is electric stem, ultrasound, hot, cold packs, diathermy. Then they check with the general practitioner, what the general practitioner does, mostly corticosteroids and, and medications. Okay? They found under manual therapy that it had the best result. They checked after, se after seven weeks of manual therapy, physiotherapy and general practitioner, manual therapy was on top 68%. Okay? Uh, physiotherapy was 51% and general practitioner was about 36%. Then they found, they said, well, wait a second, you know, this just might be just a time thing. We've got to follow this a little bit longer and see if there might be other variables involved. Well, it ended up after 26 weeks, uh, they found that the statistics were even better. And then at 52 weeks, they stayed the same. So after one year of therapy, not only was the chiropractic the most effective and um, then the physio or general therapy, but it was the most cost effective. $514, $1,492, and $1,586. You know, and this kind of this makes me angry because there's a couple states out there that are dropping chiropractic for insurance purposes. Okay? Not, they ain't going to run. Right now, they ain't going to run a study like this in America. So um, I just thought you'd know that. And this is the same thing with back pain. 
because I've seen a lot of study in, studies. The government backs up what they, what they know is most likely an absolute fact. And the government is what kind of pushed chiropractic a little further uh, than the medical community or the insurance companies or anything else. So most of the studies are done privately and governmentally because now government, uh, military uh, is getting involved with um, chiropractors. Let's see if we can turn this. All right, now, I grabbed some toxic facts. I didn't know the color was going to come out like this, but it says over 20% of all pregnancies end in miscarriage. That was the Center of Disease Control. Um, I, I talked at one of my lectures on um, those finishing polishes that you use on tables that cause uh, birth defects and stop certain hormones from affecting you. And people that like to finish furniture, old furniture, antique stuff, that could affect uh, levels. But that's what I thought about when I read that. There's twice as many deaths uh, result from corporate contamination and pollution than violent crimes and car accidents. That's by the FBI and the labor statistics. And it says it is estimated that 200,000 children are born each year with birth defects as a result of parental chemical exposure. Okay? That's the March of Dimes. Now, this is very important here. The EPA reports that 99% of the population carries one or more chemicals linked to the development of cancer. It says 3,000 chemicals are added to our food and, our, and over 700 to our tap water. No toxicity data is available for 80% of some 40,000 chemicals in commercial use. Of the more than 70,000 chemicals in daily use, only 2% are tested. Total number of pesticides in groundwater were 46. Researchers at the University of Minnesota discovered that synthetic pesticides poisons triple the rate of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. They found a high rate of chromosomal breakage at the 24th and 18th chromosome in farmers who apply these toxins to their crops. There's another article that came out that mentioned how I picked this up, it says, don't wash your dog with flea solution or use a flea collar. The child of a pregnant woman who was exposed to chemicals in these products has a five-fold increased risk of developing leukemia, lymphoma, or brain tumor by the age of six or seven years old. Okay? Those are, those are common chemicals that you can come in contact. I know you know, people have three, four dogs now. I talked to a lady who had three cats today. I mean, the, the animals are all over, and all these products are chemicals that you don't even realize. Now, right here, toxic chemicals cause 98% of all cancers. Today, one out of every 2.5 Americans have cancer. That's a lot. Where's the rest of the 2%? I'm looking at this thing, I'm like, wait. They're saying it can be caused by this, they're going to be caused by this. It's a, oh, they're blaming on genetics. Genetics is, everybody as far as genetically, yeah, there's predispositions and, and all that. And one of these days I'm going to get into all that for a lecture. But 98%, these chemicals are predisposing your body and putting you in a very difficult or toxic situation that your body cannot handle. I mean, it's that simple. But I looked at that statistic, and probably about five years ago, it was probably, I think five or 10 years ago, it was probably one out of four. Now, this is the number of new cancer cases per year per site, okay? Start here with skin. Skin, there's 700,000, that's the number one uh, site for cancer to occur is the skin, different skin cancers, okay? And I believe, because most, when you take these toxic products and they're stored in your fat tissue and you expose those things to UVB light, what does that give off? 
gives off radiation. Most of these chemicals are minerals, toxic minerals in the body. So I believe that's why skin cancer is so high. And also, it's the closest to the surface of what's around us. Look at bone. Bone's the lowest. Very hard to get deep into the bone with these chemicals if you're treating your body right and you're, you know, you're doing, doing right things. But that's telling me, here's 700,000. Let's look up. The next one uh, is 283,400 genital organs. You know, I don't think they're talking, yeah, they're talking a little bit of testicular cancer, but I think they're talking uterine cancer, ovarian cancer. That's the number two surgery in America. There's almost 750,000 uteruses taken out. Uh, the next one, digestive organs, 233,300. Your digestive organs. Um, come up to here, respiratory was 189,000. Breast was 183,000. And then you start getting into um, um, ur uh, urinary organs, start getting into oral cavity, start getting into uh, brain, and then you get into endocrine, and then finally you get into bone. And then I listed these so you could see them a little bit better. Oops. So is that just in the United States then? Mm -hmm. Skin, 700,000, genital organs, digestive organs, respiratory. There's fat tissue right there. Urinary, oral cavity, brain, endocrine, bone. Uh, <clears throat> so... <clears throat> The point I want to make here is, yes, hysterectomies are the number two surgery in America, but the number one surgeries in America is what? Gallbladder surgery. What does, gall, what does the gallbladder function do? It emulsifies your fats. Takes your fats, uses bile, turns them into your carbs or energy metabolism from fats to glucose or energy. It's that simple. Well... Most people's gallbladders, the fats, are what hold most of the toxins and poisons. So people are ended up with stones. They're ending up with um, bile duct cancer. They're ending up uh, with uh, inflammation of the gallbladder. They're ending up with necrotic gallbladder, where the, the, the gallbladder is actually just dying. It's, it's black. They've got to take it out. So that gives you some information on how... What do you think? Why do you think they want us to eat the food pyramid? <laughs> they don't want you eating any fat. They're saying through the food pyramid, they're saying that the, the world's that toxic, and that's probably the best, even though it's not the best, unless you're educated and you pick the right things. For the general public, that's the best with what kind of world we're in. But when you get educated, you understand that grange fed animals, buffalo, bison, there's different foods you can pick. And there's different ways to raise the, raise the foods. So, now, you always got to ask. I always ask myself, whenever I start wheezing, whenever I got a rash, whenever I have any type of discomfort, and I'm going to go through all the symptoms, but what are you breathing, touching, or eating? It's that simple. That's 98% of the problems. That's, I'm talking for cancer, but... There's progressions where you get to cancer. So what you're breathing, what you're touching, and what you're eating is why those cancer statistics are so high and why MS and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease and heart disease. Heart disease is not number one uh, death in America. It's not number one. Medical doctors and drugs are number one. It is. That's the truth. Right now, right now with the, with the exact, uh, Gary Noll, who has the Nutritional Institute of American, uh, Nutritional Institute of America announced that medical errors are number one at 783,936 per year, thus displacing heart disease and cancer. Why do you think that is? Well, because we're using chemicals. To fix the body.
this was kind of a <clears throat> this kind of neat thing I pulled off the internet was this this <clears throat> this calf has three eyes and two mouths. A 57 pound calf, and it's you know it's it's perfectly healthy. <laughs> but take a look at this. this. is a true this is true story. <clears throat> But I think this has a lot to do with, thank God, our, our genes are, have an accelerated mutation very quickly because if it was slow, they'd be exposed to even more of the stuff. So that was just at the wrong time, wrong place. And I think that has to do with the farming industry and all the chemicals and all the things that they've been putting on our, our foods. Now... People that have chemical sensitivities, everybody has chemical sensitivities. It's that simple. But certain people have uh, different thresholds to chemical sensitivities. Like me, I can smell if somebody's smoking. I can smell that bag. You know, I, I just got to, you know, I can smell things. Now, most people have this look of chemical sensitivity when you look at them. Most of them have the shiners around the eyes. Okay? They got the dark circles around the eyes. The lavanic symptoms. The lymphatic system's backed up. There's other reasons for this, but most of the time, shiners around the eyes. Puffy bags under the eyes or wrinkles. A spacey or demonic look. They're just like staring at you. <laughs> Bright red cheeks, nose tips or earlobes. I don't know if anybody's had that, but as a kid, when you carry those low-grade infections or have chemical sensitivities, your ears will get really hot. Your nose will get really hot. Your cheeks will get really hot. Um, nose rubbing, that nasal salute. You're always rubbing your nose. Whenever sign, you know, what's going on in here? Something you're sensitive to right now. It's that simple if you're rubbing your nose. Throat clearing or coughing, uh, lip licking, and then a puffy look to face, hands and knuckles and restless legs. I got a kind of a funny story. When we're, uh, when we're sitting in church, I got that thing going, because I got the restless leg syndrome. I'm always going. <laughs> Not that I want antibiotics and chemicals and all that stuff, but man, my, my wife's like, can you stop your leg from shaking? And I got the whole, the whole bench going. <laughs> uh, but I did it in college. I mean, once you get my brain going, that leg starts going. Um, so those are what those are the looks of chemical sensitivities and allergies. Let's see if I can, I'm scared to go too fast. Now these are the symptoms of chemical sensitivities and allergies. You have a headache. You have inordinate fatigue. Um, it's you know it, God, I just I just feel tired. Or a lot of times it's that that um, sick uh, building syndrome. Where you're at work and you're just so tired. Uh, most of these schools these days have, have molds and mildews and all types of things up in the ventilation system. Okay? Kids have reactions at school all the time. Uh, hyperactivity is huge for chemicals. I mean, the research is just astounding how many kids are on Ritalin and all these other um, accelerants to slow down their brain so they can focus and concentrate. But hyperactivity is probably the number one cause of, uh, of chemical sensitivity. Fuzzy thinking, confusion, difficulty concentrating and thinking clearly and remembering. Metallic taste in the mouth. Sudden, unexplained, intermittent problems. Walking, reading, writing, or drawing. What does that sound like? That sounds like MS to me. People have that. Because certain people, when you're exposed to them, God, my neck gets tight when I go in that area or, you know, when I go, go to work or obviously because of different reasons. But sometimes it could be as is as simple as the formaldehyde coming off a new carpet or a varnish from new wood floors or you know anything could cause that type of difficulty but the biggest cause they think are mostly chemicals and molds molds mildews fungi are probably the biggest cause of chemical sensitivities and why they affect us so much cuz once they get into our system they go right toward the gut the gut's probably about responsible for about 65 to 70 percent of your immune system. So if your gut ain't right because of medications or because of what you eat or because of high carbohydrate diets or different reasons, 
you're going to have more of these symptoms and your immune system is always going to be dysfunctional. So 70% of your immune system is in your control. Unexplained problems, walking, reading, writing, swelling or puffiness of face, fingers, joints, and then asthma, unexplained shortness of breath. Well, that's what I didn't want to happen. We're going to go quick. There it is. Now, you have digestive discomfort, heartburn, nausea, bloating, intestinal gas, itchy rashes, such as hives or eczema, insomnia, easy bruising, or black and blue marks on the skin, irregular heartbeat, rise in blood pressure, runny nose, nasal congestion, recurrent ear, sinus, lung infection. Here's the wiggly legs or the ticks. Those are the, the hyperactive kids the tremors, the twitches, and even the seizures. A heightened sense of smell, taste, and hearing. Crawling under the skin. Dark circles and the glassy, spaced out, demonic look of the eyes. Now, one thing I wanted to go through was, um, was aluminum. aluminum which I did a hair analysis myself and came up a little high for my aluminum levels. And I think that might be why when I walk out of the mall after shopping, I'm like, where the heck's my car? I don't even know. <laughs> I walk out of the mall, I get there. Thank God they have those things I can point up in the air to, to get the horn to go off. Because I wouldn't know where I'm at. Um, but here's a, here's a little statement on aluminum that... Um, a medical anthropologist and epidemiologist, Michael A. Weiner, who has a book out, Reducing the Risk of Alzheimer's, has shown that even mildly elevated levels of aluminum can influence memory disturbances in adults as well as hyperactivity and learning disorders in children. Then they found that also that uh, Professor Bogman that advises that when aluminum is deposited in the gray matter of the brain, it will inhibit nerve transport increase the breakdown of various neurotransmitters, and stimulate the production of harm, harmful proteins. <clears throat> now, aluminum poisoning, this was in uh, 1906 to 1912 with Harvard Wiley, who's a director of the uh, United States Food and Drug Administration. He said that from the earliest day of food regulation, use of aluminum or aluminum sulfate in foods has been condemned. It is universally acknowledged as a poison and deleterious substance in all countries. Okay? Today, 64 years after Wiley published those words, aluminum is still used in water purification and for sensitive consumer applications. What do you think those are? Deodorants? I don't know how that happened. They told me it might be from the battery, but I've changed the battery twice. Getting a good glimpse to everything. Okay, we'll go through this aluminum, cadmium, aluminum. And then aluminum obviously is associated with Alzheimer's and disease and senile dementia. And I call it some timers because some timers, you know, sometimes you forget where the keys are. Sometimes you, you know, you, you forget your own phone number or your, your, sometimes your own kid's name. I have my neighbor forget his own kid's name. Um, but those are those reactions. Now with cadmium, Cadmium is very interesting because uh, cadmium is used in a lot of hard candies. A lot of people with, with hard candies, it makes candies hard. They use it for gloves to make gloves harder for different types of gloving apparatuses. They take rubber gloves and they use it. You use a rubber glove, add cadmium, you can make it a welder's glove. Or you can do, there's different things you can do, but cadmium is the main. It makes things stiffer, basically. Um, so you always want to check for low zinc to cadmium levels. Um, acid drinks contained in galvanized containers. Your phosphate fertilizers will contain uh, cadmium, gluten flour, some cola drinks, tap water, 
atmospheric pollution, gas, coal, and oil. Your margarine, canned fruits and vegetables. Here's your tobacco smokes and uh, grinding amalgams. Cadmium causes hypertension, renal dysfunction, atherosclerosis, and prostatic hypertrophy. Hypertension is probably the main one because cadmium stiffens the inside lining of your, uh, uh, of your uh, the muscles of your arteries. Now, I picked this out because, uh, because of the relationship between zinc and cadmium has on, um, on, on certain males that they've studied. Um, they've shown that uh, violent behavior and chemical imbalance in, in people that have higher cadmium levels to zinc levels, and they feel that scientists believe that minerals influence behavior because the body uses them to make your chemical transmitters in the brain. So they figure zinc as one of the main neurotransmitters to relax the brain and the nervous system. So anything that's going to displace that or disrupt that or cause a deficiency of that is going to change your behavior it's going to change a focus. It's going to change a con uh, concentration. And it says that we think that there's a direct uh, result of exposure to heavy metal toxins such as cadmium and lead, which prevent the absorption of zinc. The people we studied had poor diet with sex excessive amounts of sugar and alcohol, which is also known to reduce zinc absorption. And then Steve, I don't know, Stephen. Schothauer, a leading authority of California State Institute, must be a hospital or something. I don't know why this is doing this. This thing's messed up. Gotta fix this. We'll get through it. But what happened was uh, you know, it's, it's kind of funny when the research comes out how they state things, because it says that. Um, it says that he's a leading authority, and he, and he comments on somebody. He says about this person that wrote this article that he is more he, he is more right than wrong. I mean, you know that that's kind of vague. I mean, you would say, "Wow, absolutely," or you know, something like that. But that came out in 1997 in the London Times, and they think that with with zinc that copper and zinc tend to concentrate in the center of the brain called the hippocampus, which is a known to associate with stress control. Um, lead, um, lead toxicity. <clears throat> um, most of the lead is found in cars and foundries. Um, Lead-based paints, enamel, ceramic, newspaper catalogs, uh, lead pencils, crayons, lead pipes, and so on. I got this book at home. Uh, it's a 1914 um, home, uh, um, home a physician's home um, medical book that came out in 1914. I think it was by Stewart, and they said in that book that um, in the olden days, around 1914, they used to make a solution of sulfuric acid and lemonade. And they would give these to all the, the smelter people that work in the factories and all that, and it reduced all the symptoms by 83%. They couldn't believe it. It was, it was like in 1914, okay? And then they had a study done in, um, that I picked up that, that Carrie Bone um, talked about in... Um, in Jonathan Wright's newsletter, and it talks about how the, the, the Petroff uh, um, did a study on a lead smelter, and he found the same exact things with just a supplement of garlic. So keeping your garlic levels or sulfuric acid is a sulfur compound of garlic. So maintaining your garlic at a certain dosage over a certain time when you're exposed to these certain things that you won't pick that up or you won't associate with those symptoms and have a problem, which is kind of interesting. Um, another big thing on um, heavy metals is uh, that men are getting right now is hemochromatosis. Hemochromatosis is a big issue with men uh, where you can't break down iron in the body and it builds up in the tissues and that build up of tissue causes damage to the tissues and whatever tissue it tends to build up and most likely 
uh, it starts in the liver, but it could go to the joints, it could be the heart, it could be anywhere. Okay? Um, so, the medic profession, what do they recommend? You know, get your, uh, get, get your blood drawn at least, you know, two or three times a year to keep your iron level down and to avoid iron-containing foods. Well, there's something a little bit easier. I don't mind maybe once or twice uh, donating your blood, but um, they know that um, milk thistle or a product of milk thistle called cerumen or silamen will actually um, reduce the oxidizing effects of iron and push iron out of the body. So iron actually helps the body clear uh, or I mean the, the milk thistle helps the body clear this iron out, out, of, the, out of the system, okay? So not only uh, are they, we finding that certain herbs block the absorption of heavy metals, but we're also finding that milk thistle and garlic can actually go and chelate certain things out of our body at a low level. It takes a very long time, but if you are a person or know somebody that does have hemochromatosis, they got to make sure that that dosage is correct as far as for milk thistle because they can really benefit from that because that, that will kill you. 50, 60 years of age. They don't pick that up, and that's a genetic problem. Milk thistle will cover a genetic problem. Um, so lead uh, is very big these days. Um, lead exposure toxicity, well, this whole article, sum, to sum it up, they found that the fluoridating of uh, certain waters increased the absorption of lead, okay? So chemicals in the water will increase the absorption of lead, and it depends where it's held. Most of the time, lead's held in bone. But the, fun, the thing is, if lead is in the cells or the tissues, you can get it out. If it's in the bone, it's there, that's it. You can't get it out. It's stuck in there. It's there forever. That's what they're finding. So, uh, you know, having something to prevent these things is uh, very important because, you know, once you get in a bone, yeah, you'll have certain changes, osteoporosis and, 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 and uh, calcification of certain arteries because, you know, lead displaces calcium. There'll be a lot of problems that will happen in the body. There we go again. Okay, and uh, and then here's um, lead. Here's some of the symptoms of lead. You have colic. You have discolored gums. Gout is a big one with lead. Anemia, where the locus can't be determined, and then you could have seizures, mental retardation, and also the one that needs to be added to there is uh, cancer. I'm going to do it this way. Um, mercury is another thing we got to look out for. Um, it's kind of sad to think that the, um, that the veterinarian society pulled the vaccines way even before we pulled the vaccines on uh, human beings. They stopped the vaccine, they stopped the vaccination of animals with high levels of thimerosal in 1996. It took about four or five years for them to even pull it from um, about 2,000 to pull it from certain uh, vaccines, and even certain vaccines still contain that. So um, it just goes to show you the priority. You know, who's looking out for you? You gotta look out for yourself. Uh, mercury, large fish, and I'll talk a little bit about that. Pesticide residues, um, Fungicides on grains, atmospheric pollution, dental amalgams, and interior paints, and then pharmaceuticals. Mercury causes a lot of psychological dysfunction, uh, undefined vision changes, renal dysfunction, uh, temporal, temporal uh, mandibular joint dysfunction, migraine headaches, and then problems involving loss of motor skills. Now, this is kind of interesting that I took this out of what doctors don't tell you, and I didn't know that 95% of the fragrances come from petroleum. 
kind of interesting. So if you are sensitive, like myself, to certain fragrances, I remember when I was younger, my ma used to put her hand lotion on in the car. I'm like, ma, it felt like the stuff was sticking to the inside of the hairs in my nose. It was that thick. But, you know, anybody else would have been, wouldn't have had a problem, but I felt that sensitivity. But it's kind of interesting that most of these, the headaches, the spaciness, the inability to concentrate, the mood changes, the dizziness, the nausea, these sometimes could be molds, mildews, fungal, candida that are making your body hypersensitive also. Okay? So they're finding, that's why when you look down below here, they took this out of the Candida Research and Information Foundation. So if you have these sensitivities, you'd probably do well to go on an antifungal or an anti-yeast program um, and take care of that. But there's more than 5,000 chemicals that are used in fragrance manufacture. And, um, you know, the, uh, there's no way of regulating that. If, the, if there was, they, you know, they wouldn't be called trade secrets because that's what they're called. It's businesses and trade secrets. Um, so <clears throat> these kind of tell you some of the symptoms and, and what type of things you uh, want to uh, expect if you have that problem. And most of these things, we're putting odor, odor eaters in our, in our shoes. We're putting deodorants on our body. When our body's normal, we're supposed to sweat. <laughs> I mean, sweating's normal. Okay? So we're doing all kinds of things. We're putting talc powder in our shoes, baby powder, aluminum, all that stuff. When it's perfectly normal to sweat. Now, <clears throat> researchers have found evidence of altered learning, behavior, and sexuality in animals long before they recognized similar signs of reduced intelligence, altered activity, and impaired fertility in humans. The most obvious and reported behavioral sign of neurological damage observed in rats, mice, and monkeys from PCBs in the womb is hyperactivity. This came out of Greater Boston's Physician for Social Responsibility in Harm's Way, Toxic Threats to Child Development, January 2001. The Great Lake Fishing. <laughs> Jacobson took females um, uh, that ate fish from Lake Michigan, and uh, he found that the, the females, six years before they were pregnant, ate two to three times fish for a month for about six years, okay? So that's not a lot. That's two to three times a month. For about six years, they found the difference between infants born to fish-eating mothers and non-fish-eating mothers were clearly evident. Fish-eating mothers had smaller heads, weighed less at birth, tended to be more jerky, twitchy, poorer balance, weaker reflexes, and handled minor stresses poorly. The hand, the, the head problems concentrating on tests of recognition, recognition. The infants were higher, PCBs were found, had more learning difficulties as they grew. When these children were retested at four years of age, those exposed to the high PCB levels had the lowest verbal and memory test scores. Here's another one with exposure to PCBs in the womb and through the breast milk can cause monkeys to have de deficits in memory and learning as well as hyperactivity and problems in coordination. Oops. So if you chelate or something, does that improve? Yeah, we'll get to that. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to... Okay, and then they found also in the Great Lakes uh, fish uh, and salmon appear to have developed reproductive and endocrine problems, such as the enlarged thyroids, um, because they've been living in heavily polluted uh, chemical waters, while the gulls ingest these salmon too and also develop symptoms of thyroid disease. Right up the food chain. Um, now, people are like, you know, I'm standing up here and I'm doing all this research and I'm like, what in the world are you supposed to do? You know? It's not in the soil, it's in the soil. 
You're supposed to eat fish because they got good <laughs> essential fatty acids, but the fish are contaminated. You're supposed to eat your vegetables, but your vegetables have pesticide residues and all types of chemicals on them. Okay? You're not supposed to eat too many carbohydrates. I mean, I mean, you can go on, and you're, you're, it's almost like you're in a little prison. <laughs> and so you're like, what the heck am I supposed to eat? And you're looking at this thing, and I'm thinking to myself, everybody's like, well, just eat your, you know, eat your vegetables. <laughs> eat your vegetables. And I'm like, well, that sounds good. And then until I come on to this next thing. And it says, in May 2000, the Journal of American Chemical Society published their findings in the Journal of Agriculture and Food Chemistry. They said, all 12 vegetables they grew on soil sprayed decades earlier contained chloridane. It's a pesticide, okay, sprayed in basements. Potatoes, carrots, beets absorb chloridane systematically. It was in the flesh. So, Zucchini acted like a sponge. It, end, it also ended up in beans, eggplant, lettuce, dandelion, and spinach. Okay? Just about all those things they recommend you to eat. And then, after the findings were made public, the lead author, Dr. Mary, was quoted saying, the main recommendation is to wash the food you're going to eat and not to plant near a house foundation that could have been treated with chloridine. I don't know how you're supposed to know that. If you take these precautions, you shouldn't have any problem, any cause for concern, you know? So the smart person stuck around and asked one more question. When asked by us how one washes out chloridane out of the vegetables, she admitted that's impossible. So I thought everything was supposed to be all right. Now, I put some things up here. What can we do? There's, uh, I recommend periodic cleanses. We take, our, we take our animals to the vet. We do parasite cleanses uh, with our animals. We do all sorts of things with our animals. When it comes to us, we live in the same environment. <coughs> we, li we practically eat the same food they do. Um, but do periodic cleanses. Find out if there is a problem. And I'm going to go through a couple of things to find out if you have a problem. And if you do have a problem, what's the extent of the problem? And to, depending on the extent of the problem, what are you going to do about the problem? So you measure the problem, you take action, you take, track the results, and you follow up to see if the problem is solved. Now, this was a hair analysis that I um, ran on a patient of mine that had that had tremors and memory problems. Um, he's about 58 years old, okay? And, you know, he had uh, uh, two or three TIAs, which are minor strokes. And I decided, I said, you know, why don't we do a hair analysis on you and see what's going on? Maybe there's something that is lodged in your arteries or your brain or something. Um, and so I did this on him, and he tested high for arsenic, you know. And the doctor's supposed to know everything. I'm supposed to know everything, <laughs> okay? And, I, and he said, well, what's it from? And so I went through the list of, uh, of arsenic things, and I, I, I told him, I said, well, um, I don't know. I, I, I listed those things. I gave him the sheet, and I said, these are all the things that arsenic contains. He said, well, I've, I've never had any of those. I'm like... All right, well, let's not really ponder on it. Why don't we just try to do something about it, okay? And maybe the, 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 uh, the answer will come. Well, I, find, uh, I found out that he was in Vietnam. And he came back about two or three appointments, la appointments later, and he said that when he was in Vietnam, they gave him an arsenic tablet for parasites and put him in a room. So that's where he got his arsenic from, and I had no idea. But they were trying to deparasitize him using arsenic, which they commonly did. They used it mercury and arsenic. So I put him on a program. It probably took about five months, but I, I told him, I said, you know what, I think this probably has something to do with your TIAs, your memory loss, you know, some, some unforeseen consequences that's happened in his life. You know, uh, uh, I don't want to get into all that, but... And then 
I, after, five, um, after about four or five months of putting him on a program, I took his arsenic like from down here all the way to here, which is a huge improvement. Okay? Some say, as well, hair analysis isn't that accurate. Well, hair analysis is very accurate because it's, you know, it's an excretory um, organ. So anything that's in your body that needs to be pushed out and is toxic, it's going to push, be pushed out through here immediately. Okay? So hair is a very good, and you can hold, you can hold it in your hair for a very long time. Um, so when people tell me, well, hair analysis isn't that good, I tell them mammograms are less accurate than hair analysis. Mammograms are only 150 bucks, 40% accurate, more false positives than you could really realize. And I talked to a lady uh, today, that's a pay, or, or not today, but last this past week, and I was talking to her about you know mammograms and stuff. She was asking about. It, and she told me a story. She said, "I was doing an MRI scan. MRI scans on the breast are 95 percent accurate, okay? But the punchline is that she said that each breast cost ten thousand dollars to run the MRI. Ten thousand dollars." That's what she said. She couldn't believe it because she was, she was actually reading it. Okay? So we kind of get into that. But, yeah, when people say mammograms and all that, this is a, is a tool combined with your history, your genetics, blood work, all those things put together. I mean, you've got to make a case history. Nobody just looks at this and, oh, my gosh, you got this, this, and this. No, you've got to have some other issues. Um, yes, this is through Doctors Data out of uh, Chicago. No, this is I think it's seventy-eight or eighty-three. And I forget which. I might have just went up. There's also not just for this, but there's a bottom half that tells you about your ratios and your digestion. Um, here was a patient that came in that was on um, antidepressant medications. That's why their aluminum was so high to shut down the nerve activity between both sides of the brain. That's what those medications do, aluminum compounds. Um, arsenic was really high, too. I couldn't figure out why the arsenic was high. Bismuth, I mean, anybody that's depressed, irritable, um, their nerves are on end, they're nervously exhausted. Obviously, they're going to hit the Pepto-Bismo, and they're going to have bad digestion. And then their cadmium, and, but her total toxic rep representation was huge, and I think her zinc to phosphate levels were very, very low on her bottom chart. Here's another test on um, somebody that uh, drank out of aluminum cans um, that has high aluminum, and they must have had a lot of dental work with this nickel here. Because nickel, nickel's nasty. <laughs> There's more cancers in the research from nickel than, than I've seen from uh, some of these other metals. Um, Nope, you got to dig it out. Now, everybody hears about, well, I don't know if everybody hears about it, but we hear about free radicals and there's different theories to cell damage. Well, free radicals has made the most sense to everybody. Um, as I wrote down here, uh, what happens is cell damage process has oxidation. Um, is the process that causes our cars to rust and slices of apple to turn brown. Free, free radicals happen normally in the body because cells have to break down, rejuvenate, regrow, die. I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a normal turnover rate, okay? Um, <clears throat> but certain free radicals, there's, 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 there's a lot of free radicals, and there's, um, everybody's heard of oxygen species, and there's all these different things out there from, they're all chemistry terms to say that these free radicals are damaging. If a free radical f finds uh, a protein, if it finds your eye, your heart, your brain, um, wherever it finds, it's going to cause destruction, okay? So uh, what I kind of linked in with free radicals are obviously any vaccines. Any vaccinations would cause a free radical activity in the body, okay? Anything that's going to create an inflammation, which your body says, hey, something's being irritated in the body, that's a free radical uh, reaction, 
okay? Any vaccines involved in that? Any pharmaceuticals that are chemicals? Um, any, any of the uh, five toxic metals, cadmium, aluminum, arsenic, mercury, and um, what's the last one? Lead. Lead, thank you. So free radicals do cause cell damage, and there's a normal process in the body of free radicals normally that goes with aging. Oops. But the problem is that free radical is only a theory. So in order for me to say that to say that what I want you to test for is important, I kind of put some evidence down of why, how free radicals actually can cause disease in the body, okay? And these are, these, this comes from science ministries, and this is from uh, Dr. Pappas, who is a senior scientific advisor of the Cancer Prevention Group. And he says that oxidized LDLs, which is a form of, uh, of, of cholesterol, a breakdown of cholesterol, actually causes uh, atherosclerosis. He says that free radicals cause DNA damage. Anytime you start damaging the DNA, you're going to get something that's going to grow that shouldn't be growing. And then neurodegenerative diseases such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's have been implicated from free radical damage. Ischemia, lack of oxygen to the heart. Um, skin damage in free radicals due to photoaging, UV, ozone, environmental pollutants. And then free radicals causing cataracts. Okay? Those are the ones from the research that mainly prove that the evidence of free radicals in disease. Now, <clears throat> the reason why this is important is because there is a simple test that you can do that I've, that I've constructed that from a company that you can just take home and do it in the privacy of your home. The test is called the OxyData test. The OxyData test enables the physician and the patient to determine the level of stress on the body caused by free radical activity. People of all ages can benefit from knowing if they are getting enough antioxidants in their diets and nutritional supplements to prevent free radical damage to the cells. Okay? It's the first test out to prove free radicals. It doesn't tell you what free radicals, but it tells you that more than normal are piling up in your body, so that means more damage is occurring than normally would take place in the normal aging process. So what does that mean? Something is acting as a free radical. Chemicals, pollutants, heavy metals, anything like that. Wrote, free radical activity brings about good and bad chemical events in our body. Excessive amounts can disrupt the orderly activity of many important biochemical reactions. These destructive processes make adversely, may adversely affect the chemical balance of the cells. The OxyData test determines the level of free radical activity in the body. High levels of free radical activity may be decreased by consuming antioxidant supplements. The test detects cell damage within minutes. The accuracy is 50 times more accurate than doing a blood test. It has a 90% accuracy. If you follow the instructions, that accuracy level goes up. And the frequency of test. If positive for a test, begin antioxidant program and test two times a month until normal. For prevention, test every month. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to, I'm going to hand out six of these. I'm going to give out six of these tonight. And there's going to be a little chart in there. And I did this test uh, about a week ago. And <laughs> surprisingly, I was up here. Okay? But this test tells you it's kind of like, uh, it's kind of like with the weather pattern. You see the nice orange sky. It's, it's going to be beautiful probably tomorrow. If you start seeing the clouds coming in, you know, and the, and, and the colors aren't there, it's probably going to be a crappy day or a bad day. It's the same thing with this. If you see lows, fine. When you start getting to three, four, and five, your free, free radical activity is way, way too high. There's something disrupting your immune system or causing your tissues to break down. 
There's a, for more detailed information, go to oxidata.com. It's a recommended test schedule, test every four weeks. This, I mean, and these are the people that are putting this out because they know how important this is. And I did mine, and I couldn't believe <laughs> how red that thing was. How red it was. So now I gotta go dig through and get a little bit more specific and find out what do I need to do for myself or what is causing that test. So I'm doing a program at the end that I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about that I took, I took the, 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 the product for detoxification and then I did the test after and that's probably why it was so high. Um, associated conditions that they recommend with the Oxidata test Obviously, fatigue. Anybody that has um, uh, free radicals or a lot of activity in the body, the body's going to be tired. Your immune system is, is burning up your energy, okay? You're going to shunt all your energy to your immune system, and you're not going to get a lot of digestion and nutrition. Liver stress, kidney damage, headaches, PMS, cancer, arthritis, inflammation, allergies. These are some of the... Uh, Associated blood work levels, if you have any of these, most likely triglycerides and glucose, especially for the diabetics. Diabetics have high free radical activity. They definitely lose their nerves, that peripheral neuropathy. That's a free radical activity. Eyes, cataracts, that's a free radical activity. So Alkaline phosphatate, calcium, those are other issues that have to do with cancer. SGOT, that's your liver enzymes. Your body's trying to handle something and it can't manage correctly, so it's raising the liver enzymes to try to offset that and get that out of your system. Cholesterol. Cholesterol is, when you see your cholesterol high, that is a free radical activity. Because what happens is your body tries to balance that out because cholesterol is the carrier for oxygen. So whenever you have any infection in your body, sometimes your body will raise the cholesterol level to carry more oxygen so it can get the immune system to burn up the infection. Okay? Um, lymphocytes, it has to do with the white blood cells. Eosinophils is white blood cells. And then your platelets. If your platelets are high, you're, you're trying to produce oxygen and you're not, you don't have enough platelets. There's other things to do for that. Other associated conditions, obviously, are your um, are your MS, are your Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, all those. I, as far as I'm concerned, if you don't fit into this, if you don't fit into this test, I mean, you're doing all right. There's other, there's other issues and, and tests that are going to come out to be more specific. But as far as generally detoxing, this is a great tool to find out where you're at and if the program you're doing is, is, is adequate. Here's usually the sequence that I like to uh, follow. You, you know, everybody should get a hair analysis. See where you're at. It's a good objective test. Tells you uh, um, what things you need to work on. Obviously, a detoxification program. There's about four or five different ones that maybe you want to hone in on, depending on your situation. Everybody's a little different. Some people smoke. Some people drink. Those are different free radicals in the body. There's a lot of free radicals in the body. But the test will tell you it doesn't matter. Your drinking and smoking is the same. It's causing a problem. Okay? Um, do the Oxidata test every week for four weeks. That's what I recommend on that. And then follow up with uh, um, another hair analysis test after you do the detoxification program. Uh, the nutritional support. Um, I have a program. I, I handed out the... Uh, the SP Complete Purification Program, that's a general detoxification for the liver, kidneys, and gut. That, that in itself does a good job. Um, SP Green Food and Vitanox are the ones, are the solution I came up with to kind of offset how toxic everything is, whether it's your vegetables, whether it's your fish, whether you're barbecuing every weekend, you know, because of different chemicals from barbecuing. Um, SP Green Food and the Vitanox are probably your best prevention things for walking through life and not worrying about, do I, live, do I have to live in a bubble? Okay? This is a problem that, you know, do the best you can, you know, logically and commonsensically to try to avoid things, obviously, as you learn more knowledge. But 
make sure the green food and the Vitanox, because those are your strongest um, um, things to prevent estrogen mimicking things, plastics. Some of, them, some of them are metals, but we use metals for different things. Here's a product that I'm just bringing into the office. It's called Detoxamine. Um, um, basically, um, I don't know how many people has, have heard of IV chelation, where uh, you, you put a, a product called EDTA, which is an amino acid that acts as a claw, and it goes through your blood and chelates lead, mostly, because in 1940, that's when um, chelation uh, the, the Food and Drug Administration started using chelation the most. Um, 1960, proponents and people that wanted to take a more uh, preventative approach came on the scene and said, hey, this will help with this, this, and this. Um, but <clears throat> there's a product that I'm carrying out of the office that works the same as IV chelation, but at 30% the cost. It's a very good product. I started using it myself. Um, that's, I think that's how my OxaData test came out so high. Um, but this detoxamine, um, it's, it's a suppository. It's used at night. It chelates in the middle of the night. Okay? It's, it's more convenient because it's, there's, it's non-invasive. You don't have to sit in a, in a doctor's office three hours. You don't have to pay for extra office visits. And you could do it in the comfort of your own, you know, your own home, and um, it, it works very well. Because the Dr. Halstead has the patent on that, that product. Halstead. He's probably the proponent of uh, chelation. He's the, like the father of chelation. So um, that's a product I'm bringing into the office. It's, it's, um, I think it's a very important product, uh, but there is some cost involved with it. So you want to make sure that if you, um, you do do a hair analysis and, you know, the, depending on your situation, if you don't have that big of an issue, you might want to do this program. But if it's really bad, you have certain issues, uh, you know, like I talked about with associated conditions, I think this would probably be the best bet in, in, in certain instances, okay? How long do you use that product? Depending on your situation. Um, some people, um, I mean, getting into the price, everybody, uh, most times insurance companies don't cover uh, chelation therapy, IV chelation. So if they, they usually recommend 20 to 30 IV chelations for diabetics or for, you know, uh, certain uh, tissue changes and certain things like that. But um, that could cost you anywhere around $3,500 out of your pocket to do that. If you wanted to do it under the uh, detoxamine system, it'd probably cost you about $700. Is it just as effective? Yep, just as effective. And that's why if you're in a situation where your situation's really bad and you know, there's, not, you know, there's not much left for you to do, uh, hair analysis, oxidata, and then you can, you can measure that change. Yep. Um, this was this. I, I found this. You know, I kind of pulled this out because people like to bring their own supplements in and have me test them all the time to say, hey, does this one work? Does this one work? There is no way of me, yeah, you can muscle test it and stuff, but there's no way of me knowing if I'm not going to make a, 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 you know, an educated guess in somebody's product that I know nothing about. Okay? But we only use the products in the office that make sure that things are really in the bottle or on the label. And this is a big, big issue in America. You probably wouldn't be able to get away with this in Europe because they use pharmace pharmaceutical grade products. In America, you don't know if you're getting your stem, the bark, the leaf, or you're not getting anything like one study I'm going to show you. Um, is it really in the bottle? Um, they, uh, they want to make sure that, uh, yeah, there's plenty of research out supporting, you know, that, you know, herbs uh, help support, you know, normal functions in the body. But when you come to most of the studies, this is a study right here they did at the pharmacy school at the University of Maryland on 32 bottles of chondrosamine sulfate. They found 
that only two of the products met the, met the label claims, mean sulfate. Then they found, uh, in fact, they said 14 of the 32 bottles contain 10% or less of the amount claimed on the label. So when you're getting a product from our office, you're getting it more than what it says on the label or exactly the same. They're not going to skimp on the numbers. Because you take 10% away from all those other bottles that they produce, that's one extra bottle of money. Here's a study here on uh, less than 30% of the, 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 the label claims. It said that they evaluated 51 antioxidant products, which are most, it, it's one thing having a bad test for an oxidative system to check your free radicals and try to use antioxidants. And it's another thing saying, hey, can I use this product? I think this is gonna work best for me because I found it because the guy from Zerbos helped me out or the guy from GNC helped me out. That's fine, and that's fine, it's perfectly good, but I don't know the answer to that product. I only know what I'm using. So you could get yourself in the corner of spending a lot of extra money that you wouldn't necessarily need to, but they found on this, less than 30% of all antioxidant claims were met. What is even more shocking is that seven of the 51 products tested revealed no antioxidant activity at all. <clears throat> they did a study on uh, uh, the product uh, Echinacea, because there's, like Dr. Ten talked on his lecture on the different products in Echinacea, there's different uh, Echinacea species. And they tested 59 Echinacea only products. 10% of the products tested contain no measurable amounts of Echinacea. <laughs> what a scam. And then they said that the Echinacea species found in each product was consistent with label claim in only 52% of the samples. So they didn't have even the right species in there. And of the 21 products that were labeled as being standardized, only 43% met the quality standard designated on the label. How, you know, how can I dose, <laughs> how can I dose a product that only has 50% of its value? Um, here's a, um, here's a, a research here on a, um, International College of Integrative Medicine, uh, Dr. James Short, medical doctor, presented slides of offshore raw material manufacturing plants, and he showed slides <laughs> of processed and packaged raw materials that had bacterial and molds. He said the manufacturer pr provides the product in respectable containers that are clean and safely sealed. But the conditions that are present before it reaches the manufacturer's hands are unknown even to the supplier who sells the raw materials. Uh, real quick, they checked 11, uh, Dr. <coughs> Short said, they checked for heavy metal content, parts per million of 11 glucosamine products. The cumulative toxic metal profile ranged from 10 parts per million to 2,100 parts per million. You had no idea what you were getting. So it's very important that um, not only people you know, buy the product, but they also research the product and they run the correct tests on the product. And people say, well, how come my product is so less expensive than your product. Because there's labeling. Because there's labeling, because they're meeting the labeling. They're paying for the testing and the standards. They're paying the legal fees. They're paying for the marketing. So you're taking a chance when, when um, you don't know what you're going with. Here's good manufacturing is important. Uh, tested raw materials, company received a sage from supplier that they could take on faith, invested to build and staff phytochemistry lab to test and screen quality, potency, cleanliness, and freshness. And most manufacturers don't have the capacity to test raw materials for heavy metals, mold, bacteria, and other contaminants. Here's a mild detox program that I handed out. 
so that everybody, uh, you can see a little bit on the price, what you're getting into, what type of program. This is like the, this is like the most general program that, that, you should, uh, that everybody should at least do twice a year, I believe. Okay? Once in the spring, summer, once in the fall, winter. Tells you exactly week one, you use this product. Week two and three, you use this product. And then um, this is mild. <laughs> That's the mild one. If you're gung-ho about this, moderate, you can avoid these certain things that might cause allergies or problems with your um, immune system. Um, and then plus you do the same thing and then add eight glasses of water and you might want to add that SP green food with it. And then this is the optimal detox. Eat only raw fruits and vegetables, organic if possible, no cooked. You do the green food, you do the SP complete, drink eight glasses of water. Okay, so that's how you do that one. Now, these are the chemicals blocks. These are the, these are the two products that we use out of the office, the Vitanox, which has the rosemary, the turmeric, the green tea, um, which is a vitamin, Vitanox, vitamin antioxidant, okay? That's what they named that after. That's a very good product for blocking chemicals, pesticides, and hormones. Okay? SP Green Food, same exact thing. I didn't talk much about the IAG. They, they're finding right now most people that have chemical sensitivities, and the cancer rate being at 1 to 2.4 people right now, they're finding that the white blood cell count since probably about 40 or 50 years has gone down about 2,000. So it went from like 7,000 to 5,000. So our immune systems are deteriorating, so we don't really have the tools or the ammunition. These, IAG supports the most primitive system to clean up and help uh, with your immune system, which are the natural killer cells. And people, most of the people that I see been here, been at Dr. Ten's lecture when he talked about um, trying to do immune dysfunction and trying to increase your white blood cells and do certain things to, uh, to help uh, uh, increase your antioxidant levels and all that. And it's sugary. <laughs> uh, here's the detoxamine from World Health Products. It's a sample only. Um, and this is a great, you know, this, this is such a breakthrough. Um, for people that just can't afford it and just, just don't um, really know how important toxicity levels are becoming. I mean, we have information at the office. I have about three or four booklets here that talks about how bad toxic metals are and how the relationships are to your arteries, your heart, your brain, disease. I feel that everybody needs to go through this program in America. I'm going through it right now. <laughs> um, and I, I think it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a real true breakthrough um, and, it, and it allows people to get attention that couldn't otherwise afford it. Um, what else do I want to say about it? Obviously, it's for heavy metals. Um, there's different programs on it. Um, there's different recommendations, but go to the website, detoxamine.com. Go to the website, read about it, okay? Uh, familiar yourself with it. They got over 50, 70 research journals in there on all the information and, and what's tied to this product and how they made it, how it's released through the colon, what type of... Um, uh, how the vasculature works for it to get into the system, how it bypasses the liver. I mean, all this stuff. They got this stuff, it, it, it's, it's patented. So, and it's very important for uh, people to understand that. So, if somebody comes in with a, hair, a, a mineral test and their, their, their body is too high in toxic metals, a lot of times we just told people, hey, listen, you know what? You're off the chart here you might want to go for IV chelation. There's not a lot we can do as far as from a supplemental program because it'll take way too long. It'll cost far too much. You're better off doing it the most efficient way, okay? But doing this, it's the same exact thing except three 
of the suppositories equal one IV chelation. So this product right here has 30 suppositories in it. So doing this for one month is like giving yourself 10 IV chelations. And then you take, obviously you want to take maybe a, a multivitamin, multimineral with it just to make sure you're, you're turning over to good stuff and not all pulling everything out, okay? But that's something that I would go over individually with the, 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 the you know, for doctor-patient uh, relationship. That's all I really want to mention. Yeah. This one, purchase that right through your office? Yep. Yep, right through our office. And, uh, but yeah, I, get familiar with that. This is, this is a huge, think about it. They said that 98% of all cancers were toxic chemicals. So if you, can, if you have the, the ability to remove these things, it's amazing. So there's, there's a lot of answers in front of you. <laughs> and I tried to pick the information so that you would get that idea. Um, how to keep detoxification efficient? Obviously, avoid allergenic foods. I believe that we're so allergenic these days. Everybody comes in and says, I'm allergic to sulfites. Well, what does that mean? I've had two people come in today. I'm allergic to sulfites. You can't be allergic to sulfites. It's, I mean, it's a detoxification phase. You're allergic to antibiotics, penicillins, different things like that. You're not allergic to eggs. You're not allergic to onions and leeks and all that stuff. Those are all sulfur chemicals. If you're allergic to, to, to sulfur, you'd be allergic to those same things too, and you're not. You're allergic to the antibiotic is what it is. All, everybody, I, well, I can't take a garlic supplement. I'm sulfur sensitive. Well, there are some people that are allergic to garlic, but it's not the sulfur that's getting you. It's the protein from the garlic. Okay? So <clears throat> that's very, very important. So I see a lot of people that have allergies that also have chemical sensitivities. Because if your immune system's not right, right it's not going to tag something correctly. I feel that if you have more than three or four allergies going on in your system, you're running away from the problem by avoiding 10 foods. I don't eat this, I don't eat this, I don't eat this. You know what? That's ridiculous. You gotta do a detox program, you gotta clean your system out. You might have one or two things that you're sensitive to on a bad day. Eat foods with colors. You know, the greener you are, the cleaner you are. It's that simple. The oranges, the yellows, the, the reds, all that stuff. I don't know how you can be healthy and avoid acid-lowering drugs. There's no way you can do it. You cannot stop your digestion. Avoid acid-lowering drugs. Somebody came in and was diabetic, and they said, I'm on a Prevacid. I said, well, wait a second. Your body's throwing up. It's throwing up because it's telling you it doesn't want any more food. And you're taking Prevacid. Because you're diabetic and your sugar levels, you have plenty of triglycerides and you have plenty of storages to turn that over. You might be irritable for three or four days. So that's why I, I said, how can you take an, an, an acid-lowering drug when your body's telling you the right thing? And, and, and I don't, you know, four weeks, six weeks being on that, but being on that for a year, two years, three years, killing yourself. Nothing in the research that says that it's supported for you to be on that for more than six weeks. Avoid acid eat nutrient-rich, whole food, and high-fiber diet. Chew your food. That's, I mean, I went to nutrition school. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I got out of it. Don't eat salt. Don't eat fat and chew your food. You don't chew, you know, that's, that's very, very, most people just scarf their food down. A lot of times I don't have time to chew my food. Uh, avoid drugs. <laughs> uh, take a probiotic supplement. There's plenty of, uh, plenty of probiotic things that you can do. Cut down on alcohol and cigarettes. Take design supplements. Take nutrition, take supportive things that you know will target your problem, and then strengthen liver function. Here's some acknowledgments that I want to, uh, that I got most of my information from. Here's Our Toxic World by Dr. Doris Rapp. That was my allergist when I was a kid. 
Those are my allergies. That's where I got most of my information on allergies and, and different things. I learned it from her books. She's got some neat stuff on her site. Go to her site. This is her book. It's got everything in there. It is so, it's broken down to everything. Great book. I got this one when I started looking at the pesticides, the fungicides. What type of thing can you do naturally? This is the website that comes up right there. Getset.com. He's got a company. He's got a couple natural patented products that you can use. Lawn, pesticides in your house, some natural products that you can use, air fresheners, stuff like that, that won't cause a problem. Apex Energetics, the oxidata.com, uh, that's a company that, that came out with that lab test. Cancer Decisions Newsletter, I didn't talk about that today because it was a little bit too extensive. Dr. Coslo, I got a little information off his website on metal toxicity and, uh, and poisonings. Detoxamine.com, I already told you about that. Clinical Pearls Research, I got that. And then detoxification and weight loss off of Dr. Tent's lecture. Okay? And I want to, did anybody fill out the, the form to get tested tonight? I'm going to do a lecture on sound health next one coming in for people that came in late. I'm just going to test two people. Heart catheter, flush, rate, blood pressure. <coughs> I mean, eczema. Anita. Who's Anita? Oh, come on up here, Anita. I don't know what your problem is, but tell everybody what it is. <laughs> you forgot to write it down. <laughs> and then I'm going to check. Which is <coughs> Let's check this one. I'm Dr. Krieger. What's going on? Um, if I don't take vitamins or something, I mm -hmm. don't You don't take vitamins? Well, I don't. Okay. I do solve part of the problem, but I still feel like I'm really numb and empty sometimes. Okay. Now, what, do you, have you had any blood work or tests done recently? No. Now, let's test you. Come on over here. And I picked out three specific tests for today. Hold your arm on as tight as you can. Hold as tight as you can. Resist. I'm going to push down you hold tight. Good. You have any problems with your neck or anything? Hold tight. I'll try to make you sit too long. Hold tight. Good. Now let's test her. See how good of a tester she is. She's just fatigued. I mean, fatigue can be from anything. Hold strong. Hold tight. You're supposed to test good for an apple. <laughs> I don't know these days. Hold strong. Good. So she's a good tester. Now let's try to go through her system, her body, and test a couple things. Hold tight. How long have you had those glasses? They look brand new. Second grade. Or not well. I haven't had these glasses for a bit. Alright. Yeah, I can tell. Okay. Hold tight. Since second grade? Yeah. Now I talked about the glass thing at my, um, at my one lecture on digestion. Most people that have bad eyes have bad protein digestion. They'll always benefit from it, some type of enzyme supplement. Because those little muscles in the eyes need to be fed with protein. If you can't break them down, they can't be fed. Okay, so I got that from no matter what the age when you start wearing glasses. Well, she started so young. Then I was just asking if. Yeah, there's probably other areas. Mercury can cause phasiness and stuff like that, but there's different areas. Hold tight. Right side, <coughs> left side. Let's go through our systems. That's what that poster is there. Good. Hold tight. Good. Here's your. And there's really no fatigue. Kind of, do you have fatigue? You know, there's no fatigue like that. So it's kind of digging through the body to try to find out. There's your thyroid. Positive, negative. Thyroid's pretty good. Here's your bees. Hold tight. 
Here's her, min er, her hormones, hold tight, master hormones. Positive, negative. Now tell me about your hormones. <laughs> your hormones bothering you at all? Hot flashes, arches falling, no. hysterectomy. No. Let me see that simplex out. That's her master hormone. Something's got her kind of irritated, emotional. That's a, that's, a, that's a master hormone reflex right here for the hypothalamus. Hold strong. That might be for her eyes. You don't even know that. Good. So she had a master hormone. I see people that are run down, fatigued. Master hormone's a common problem. I'm gonna check her for her iron. I'm gonna check her liver. And then I'm going to check her for something else. <laughs> Good. I know it's weird. That's the reflex. Believe me, it's right there. <laughs> I just got it. He's putting his finger in my face. <laughs> Three, four, five. She's a four on that. Four net simplex F. <coughs> That's for sympathetic dominant female. Kind of go, 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 nerve. She's nervously exhausted to fatigue. That's usually what happens. You run yourself into the ground and then you're exhausted. How much do you do any stimulants, coffees, teas, colas? I've tried not to recently, but I did quite a few six months ago. You like Mountain Dew? No. <laughs> I used to, though. I feel that the people that like Mountain Dew are definitely attention deficit disorder. <laughs> I like Mountain Dew. <laughs> Good. Put your arms out like that. Let's check her heart. Her heart could be tired. Hold tight. Hold. Good. Now, let's check her chemical reflex, environmental reflex. Touching. Hold tight. Anything you're touching. Here's Cal Ammo. Let me see that Cal Ammo <clears throat> What do you do for a living? Uh, I'm an insurance agent. Okay. Are you having fun doing that? Yeah. Good. What type of insurance? Any kind, all kinds. Put that in your hand. Now, when you test for hold tight, anything sensitive to your environment, that's your environmental reflex, you'll test through that hand. Anything you touch. So, do you have allergies? No. You have an allergy to something. Or it's either that or you've been juicing too much or something. Oh, I, you juice? No. Yeah. She's a four in that cal ammo. Simplex F for female. We're going to do that cal ammo. Hold this for me. Okay. Keep on going. I can really. Keep on taking your bark. Build you back up. Good. Here's your thyroid. Let me see that ferro food in there. Check her for anemia, because that's common. Hold tight. Hold strong. That's not too bad. Uh, let me see the, uh, what's that liver tree? Check this liver here. Liver's not bad. Positive, negative. Do you need that? No. That's good. What else can I test you for fatigue? Hold tight. So basically, we got her hormones a little bit. She got good hydration, not too bad on her hydration. I think her pH is off a little bit. She's creating a little bit too much histamine in her body. Good. You have all your parts? Mm -hmm. Good. You gotta ask that. Good. So that fatigue, I'm gonna put her on that simplex F. We're gonna do three twice a day on that. She tested for two and two on that. She's probably a little bit emotionally drained. Irritated, that's where that reflex goes, and that will make her tired and fatigued. And then I want her doing that pH thing for what's coming down the pipe for allergies and sensitivities. Okay? Mm -hmm. Other than that, <clears throat> pH and her hormones are off. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. All right. Thank you for Thanks. coming up here. Yes. Come on down. Come on down this way. All right, let's check somebody with the heart. Agnes Packler. 
<laughs> Come on up here, Agnes. She won't go. Go home. Just go, Mom. All right, Victorian Keith. <coughs> no, she's doing two of the Cal and only three and three hundred simplex half would be fine. All right. She's got eczema. Oh, Good right. walk her. Yeah, just walk her on that way. You got eczema pretty bad? Good. She's got a good strong arm. Now, anybody that has eczema skin conditions always has allergies. Oh, there's my apple cigarette. Let's see how good you test. Turn this over. Where's your eczema the worst? Legs. Your legs are bad? Mm-hmm. Have they been that way all your life? No. So your husband, how long ago did your husband pass away? Five years. It's too bad. And it started, it started then, with your legs? Mm-hmm. And my back, when he passed away, I was covered from head to foot. Mm-hmm. Did eczema? Mm-hmm. That's, I don't know. She said it was eczema. I just didn't know what it was. All right. Let's test you and see. Hold your arm out tight. You're a smoker? Mm-hmm. And you smoked before you had eczema, right? Yes. All right. Hold that. Right, left, staff, strep. There's yeast. <coughs> Metabolic. Hold tight. There's her gallbladder. There's her thyroid. There's no eczema test. You're just trying to find out what's pushing this out of her body. Up an inch, over an inch. Hold tight. Hold strong. Good. Check her liver. I'm going to get her on those kidneys. I'm going to get her on that kidney. Kidneys, kidneys, especially the left kidney. Positive, negative. Let me see that heart connects in there. Kidneys. You know what's good about that detoxamine also um, is that when you do an IV chelation <clears throat> over a three hour period, that turns over in the kidneys. That dumps a lot on the kidneys and the liver. When you're doing that detoxamine, you're only, it's only half the speed. So it's lighter on, the ki- lighter on the kidneys and lighter on the liver over a period of time. It takes about 80 minutes. It's very slowly released. Let me say albuplex, which is good. And it made me think for when I was checking her kidneys, because it's very important, because that's the first thing that you know people will mention is IV chelation is the toughest on the kidneys and the liver. You don't want that. But that's why this, they, they cover for that. Kidneys. Good. Sometimes that leg will be swollen. Let me see your leg a little bit. Yeah. All right. Ditches a lot at night. Yeah. Eczema, psoriasis, all that. You had mites? No. <laughs> That's what they told me. Is that what they told you? Since you just can't see mites, it's probably a good diagnosis. <laughs> yeah, that hot water, yeah, will irritate that. How about so? Vitamin C will irritate that sometimes. Oof. Two, four, six, eight. She's a nine. I want her doing something for her kidneys. I'm going to clean out her kidneys. Just the Argonex. Drink enough water. No, you don't need that. But 
your arms out like that. Hold tight. There's our heart. There's our hormones. Good bees. So we're going to play that on her. We're going to play her kidney, especially her left kidney, because that might be a little bit irritated in there for her. My finger from smoking, but we're going to, I'm going to hopefully her kidneys will help dry up or pick up some of that psoriasis or eczema you have in her legs. Okay? So that's what we'll play on her. I just want to do it on her left kidney. We're going to do five hour next twice a day. We'll do that for two weeks. Okay? And we'll see how that itching and all that does with that kidney. Good, that's good. Yep. That helps tremendously if you got any type of inflammation or anything. Especially a skin condition is always inflammatory. All right? Okay. Stay on that. Thank you. Does anybody have any questions? Dr. Krieger, is yeah. the eczema and psoriasis and all that part of the um, autoimmune system? Right. And that could be from cortisol levels. That can be from food allergies. Is that something be... she could take for, her, for, the, uh, for the immune system? Well, That's yeah, I mean, there's a lot of different things, but her kidneys are the, are the ones that are testing. So I would do her kidneys before, because if, if, if her kidneys aren't working, it doesn't matter what you do. Right, start there. But I'd rather, I'd rather I would clear her kidneys and her liver, and then she could probably start doing that IAG. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, it started right when her husband passed away, so there's probably some emotional thing. Involved too. Yeah. Okay. But yes, yeah, psoriasis can be caused from anything. I remember when it came out in the in the in the news that uh, chromium cures psoriasis. I'm like, chromium? It worked on like one or two patients, <laughs> and then there were like five hundred different variables that could cause that. So yeah, you're right. Doing the immune system, uh, make sure her liver and her kidneys are clear, uh, would definitely help her. But from the muscle testing, just her kidneys for right now. Okay. Any other questions? Yes. Uh, uh, on the accuracy of hair analysis, I switched uh, my uh, hairspray to uh, herbal essence that's advertised, and I had a hair. Analysis. I like that commercial. Yeah, I had a hair analysis, and I found out that that they have arsenic in there. Really? Herbal, herbal essence. essence. Huh? And as soon as I stopped it, and the next hair analysis, no, no arsenic anymore. Yeah. <laughs> Here's another little sneaky arsenic thing that's coming in through the diet, which I found uh, is in a medication that they're using on chickens. And I'll find it real quick. One of the things, too, can I mention something? Sure. You, you had um, brought up about deodorant. Mm -hmm. and. When I had this testing done before, I was high in aluminum, mm -hmm. and I think it was partly due to um, shampoo right. and the um, deodorant. So I just use that crystal because it's alum, I guess, which is, they said is different. And then your body still it, it allows your body to sweat a little bit. Yeah, I I don't. Because uh, it doesn't. Sweat. Alum sounds like aluminum to me. I asked them. And they said, because I said the same thing, and they said it's it's different. So you know, I, yeah, I'd ask, well, how? I mean, will you call me and you tell me? Because you know the questions to ask. <laughs> well, I use speed sticks, so I don't ask anybody questions. There's no aluminum in there. <laughs> yes. I had a um, I what I thought was a little bit interesting. I they couldn't figure out. Dr. Tenney was unable to help me figure out why I was um, was real toxic with the aluminum. Mm -hmm. And um, after getting everything out of my life, looking at eye makeup, all sorts of stuff, um, they put anti-caking elements, uh, aluminum elements in to anti-cake, you know, for right uh, for salt and, and yeah. all sorts of stuff. And I'm a dental hygienist. All right. I, for eight nine hours, I wear gloves yeah. with powder in them. Yeah. Oh, I quit I gloves with powder in them. Powder. I don't have any more problem. That's cool. I was able to chelate it. Yeah. But I talked to uh, Dr. Dr. Chen's dentist was saying something about, yeah, he's high with aluminum. And I said, oh, by the way, oh, I, I want see. to look at your gloves. He uses the same gloves I did. Mm. So cool. I don't know what happened with that, but it you was kind of interesting. Wrapped up in all that and being on medications for that. Yeah cortisol creams and all that nonsense this is what's going on 
Here, here's the arsenic. There's the science news, 70% of commercial chickens raised for meat in the U.S. are fed uh, roxazone, a benzene arsenic compound. Uh, there's your fungicides, rodenticides, insecticides, and also paras parasites, all that. That's where that, that one guy tested high for ar arsenic in Vietnam. And then medications, water, and seafoods. And then the, the other one is the wood. That's the, they call it Paris Green. It's a wood preservative they're putting on there. You heat that wood up and you'll absorb that stuff. All right. Other than that, if anybody else wants to talk, I'm here after. And uh, thanks for coming out. And uh, my next lecture is on sound health.